Hello, welcome back. I'm out in the shop and I'm thinking about sharpening some drill bits. Now there's a few different ways I can go about that. Let's talk about that. I'm Glenn Nowakowski and you're watching Glenn Now on YouTube. When I think about sharpening a drill bit, I remember through the years at work, having to take a drill going up to a pedestal grinder and sharpening them. Did that for many years. And uh, now that I have my own shop, I got tired of that. I uh, use a drill sharpener. But, uh, you know, the more I think about it, I, I went, I was thinking about the drill bit. I went, I wonder what kind of information I could find out on the internet. So I started looking around. And I, of course, came up with some stuff. And if you ever watch my videos, you know I can't just ad lib. I need to read this stuff. So let me tell you a little bit about the drill bits or what they call uh, twist drills. Okay, uh, what I did find out is until around the time of the US Civil War, most holes in cast iron and in steel were drilled using forged spade-shaped drills. I've got a couple of uh, sketches or pictures. Here, look at this. There was a problem with that. When using a spade drill, you would have to, what they call peck drill. Drill a little bit, then remove the chips. Repeat that. Drill a little bit and remove the chips. It was slow. Then, in 1861, Stephen A. Morris invented the twist drill. Yes, that's the same guy who invented the Morris taper. He called it a twist drill because it was just that. He milled a straight flute say this was a piece of round. He drilled a straight flute on one side, flipped it 180 and drilled a straight flute on the other side. Then he literally heated it up red hot and twisted it to create the helical form. The helical twist would help pull those chips out, which was, would make it a lot faster. And in fact, some companies still do it that way. They mill or grind a straight flute and then heat it up and twist it. But most companies nowadays uh, grind in that helical. Helical flute. <laughs> One of the things that are important when sharpening a drill bit and a lot of people don't think of this, is thinning the web or giving the drill bit a split point. If you think about it, right down the middle of a drill bit is a solid core. I always thought about that. You're pressing on it and it's like, what? why is it so hard? Why don't those flutes just grab? When trying to drill a hole, it's like pushing one solid piece through another solid piece of material. So, after that, no, after you sharpen the flutes, the two flutes, you need to put a cutting edge on the core, which is called the web. And that's what it means by splitting the web. You need to put a little cutting edge on each side of that so it self-centers and cuts. 
What I used to do a lot of times when I was drilling larger holes was I'd measure that web and uh, drill a smaller hole down the center of the piece. That core would follow that hole and keep it from bouncing around, especially if you weren't able to get those flutes exactly centered. They have to be the same length, otherwise your drill kind of moves over and cuts over size. Okay, enough bullshit. Uh, sharpening a drill bit. I don't care to do it by hand anymore. What I did is I bought a, a drill doctor. It's not the best, but it works. It's small, cost me about $200, and it does a fantastic job. It does an okay job, let's put it that way. It uh, sharpens it, both flutes equal. That's the hardest thing when you're drilling a, sharpening a drill bit, to keep the flutes equal length and at the same angle. You can do it, it's not impossible. People have been doing it for years. That was one of them. But uh, this thing, simply putting it into the holder it, and then into the grinding wheel, it sharpens both flutes the same size, same angle, and you could split the point. Although on this grinder, it chews up too much of the heel. It weakens it. When you're really barreling through some steel and it's getting hot, if you don't have a big heel back here to absorb the heat, it just, the end of it erodes. Uh, so, I was looking around my shop and I was thinking, how can I split that point quicker and better without getting rid of the heel? And I ran across an old, an old uh, drill sharpener. I've probably had it for 20 years or longer. It was underneath the bench, way in the back. Uh, Let me show you that. Let me bring it up here. Here it is. My old drill sharpener. Some people may remember those. I worked in a couple of shops that had these old drill sharpeners. But, here, let me tell you a little bit about this. The grinder I'm talking about was uh, made by a manufacturer in Natick, Massachusetts. The name of the company, Black Diamond Saw and Machine Works Incorporated. Let me give you a little history. It started out making band saw filers. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a band saw filer. It's pretty good. As a die maker, I used them a lot in the old days. They started making those in like 1911. Uh, I believe they purchased the Worcester Drill Bit Grinder Company in 1939. Continued making that model until 1987. And in mid 50s, mid 60s, somewhere around there, it's hard to find the information. Uh, they designed their own grinder, and that was this here. I think the grinder I have is from the 1960s. The company's still in business, but what they're known for is uh, uh, the right bandsaw guides. They make a lot of different products, but the, the bandsaw guides are what they're known for. And 
where all of this is going is uh, I'm going, my next project, I'm going to take this thing apart, see if I could just refurbish it. I'm not going to do a lot of work other than take it apart, clean it up, put it back together and see how it works. I'm going to have to find a wheel online somewhere. So that is going to be my next uh, project. This thing, I just basically want to take it apart. And, uh, you know, I thought a lot of this stuff was uh, add-ons. Like this piece of wood for all these little collets. And I have all the collets, too. But I saw on the website that came with the whole all the collets. It goes all the way down to one sixteenth of an inch drill bit, which is pretty small. I don't even think that the drill bit sharpener that I have, the drill doctor, goes that small. But anyway, uh, that's going to be my next project. It's going to take me a long time to do. I'm not going to get into it today, but you can see updates as I go, taking this apart, cleaning it all up, and I hope you enjoy me going through all this. So, until next time, enjoy.